Anybody here? Richard, that high back chair. There's someone sitting in it. All you can see is his hand and wrist resting on the arm of the chair with a burning cigarette between the fingers. He must be asleep. Why don't you wake Wait him up? Wait a minute. Richard. The cigarette. It's burned down to the man's fingers. Oh. But whoever that is over there, he's dead. Did you read me, sir? Oh, I say. Oh. <laughs> uh... Are you the innkeeper? I'm sorry I was so long, sir. We're short-handed these days. I was outside. Couldn't come any sooner. There's a dead man over there. Uh, what was that? A dead man sitting right over there in that chair. Well, he's gone. But Richard... Did you say a dead man, sir? Yes. He was sitting there in that chair. He was there. My wife and I both saw him. Must have been the shadows from the fire, sir. I say, come here, will you? Are you looking for lodging? What is it, dear? Uh, come over here. All right. There was someone here. Certainly there was. We both saw him. Look. They're on the floor by the arm of that chair. Oh, a burning cigarette. Yes. The one we saw burning in the dead man's hand. Yes. I say, innkeeper, come over here. Oh, I didn't see you follow us. Look, we saw the man from over at the desk. All we could see was his arm and hand with a cigarette between his fingers. That's the cigarette down there, still burning. And it was burning the man's fingers. I'm sure you're both mistaken, sir. There's been no one here in the lobby. It was merely the shadows from the fireplace. Then how do you account for that burning cigarette there on the floor? One of the guests probably dropped it, sir, by accident before retiring. But I tell you, there was someone sitting in this chair. And then, since he's not here now, it may have been the aunt. The, the haunt? Yes, miss. Folks call him the ghost of the pig and ammo. No, oh. oh, come now. Don't start any nonsense about ghosts. His name was Trafalgar. First or last, I don't know which. No one remembers. He built this old wayside inn more than 200 years ago. Meredith's girl, he did just after it was finished. And the night he moved in, he was murdered in cold blood by one of the girl's rejected swines. Killed Trafalgar for revenge, he did. Right here in this room. While his honor was smoking his last smoke before retiring. Oh, then, then it was the ghost. Could have been, miss. Could have been. Folks claim they see him every now and then. Though I can't say I has. I say, look. Yes, Governor? There, on the back of that chair. Isn't that a spot of blood? Well, no, I, I don't rightly know, sir, but... Well, yes. I believe you're right, Governor. Oh, the man was stabbed in the back. He was through the heart. Seems that spot there would be just about where he would leave blood behind was he to sit in this chair here. Oh, Richard, let's go. Oh, so you've seen him too. <laughs> well, well, that makes three times this month. <laughs> Seems like he's making quite a habit of visiting us lately. Oh, shall we go, dear? Yes, Emily. Right away. Will you two be wanting a room for the night? Oh, sir? no. No, we're looking for a place called Maryvale. Maryvale, yes, I... Yes, we, we thought we had the right directions from Effinshire, but we ended up here. We seem to have lost the way. Oh, no, Governor. We just haven't gone far enough. Maryvale lies about 20 kilometers to the west. How far is that in miles? Mm, about 12, 13. Then let's go on, Richard. We can make it in 20 minutes. The road is not so good, miss. Take probably 45 instead of 20. Besides, Merivale hasn't been occupied for nigh on to six years. You say it hasn't? Oh, no, sir. But we understood it had been occupied by a, a Miss Priscilla Longacre. Yes. Miss Longacre died about four months ago and left Merivale estate to me. When I managed to clean up my affairs in Madrid, we came up to retire and live on the estate. 
I was with a British concern in Spain. Now I've resigned and come up here. Till I got that message, I didn't even know I had an aunt living in England. You say her name was Priscilla Longacre? That's right. She died late in December. Mm. Day or so after Christmas. Priscilla Longacre has been dead for five years. No. What? Indeed she has, Governor. Police folks say that. Five years ago, she telephoned here to the inn, she did, and asked for Dr. Riley. He answered the call and found her dead. So he come back to make a report. But when the authorities got to the place, the body was gone. Some say it was stolen. Some say the old lady become a zombie. Oh. Anyways, she was never seen again. And Marydale was closed up because nobody knowed who was kin to the old lady. But that's impossible. Why, well, I was notified early in January of her death. You notified me, Governor. Why, well, the man you just spoke of, Dr. Hiley. You couldn't have been notified by him, Governor. Why not? Because he died two days before Priscilla Longacre. But I have his letter. Oh, have you now, sir? Well, yes, of course. Outside in my car. He said he would meet me at Maryvale tonight. <laughs> then maybe you're going to see another ghost before the night is finished. Eh, Governor? <laughs> Richard, please, let's go. Yes, dear, right away. Now, look here, innkeeper. Is what you've been telling us the truth? Of course it's the truth, Governor. Why would I be telling you things what ain't true, huh? Then there hasn't been anyone living in Maryvale for five years. And Dr. Hiley has been dead that long, too. That's the gospel truth, Governor. You'll see so for yourself when you get there. Well, that's where we're going. You say it's about 12 miles. Mm, about that, Governor. You'll come to a fork just around the turn, up a ways. Tight the left one. The other goes to London. Right. Come along, Emily. Yes, dear. If you need anything, my name is Jason. You can telephone here if you like. Just ask for the pig on the hammer. Yeah. All right. Oh, thank you very much. I yeah, say, this wind's strong. Come up in the last few minutes. Richard. Yes, dear? Did you notice that man's hand? The right one? No, dear, I didn't. Why? There were deep, angry burns on the top of his forefinger and the middle one. Like burns a, a cigarette would make. Hmm. Place seems deserted. Thank heaven that wind stopped. Oh, Maryvale is in a small valley. Doesn't blow much here. Look at the windows on the house. All boarded up. And so is the door. Hmm. Looks weird in the moonlight, doesn't it? Richard, is, is there a hammer in the car? No, I don't think so. Why? Well, you'll need one if we're going to get inside the place. That's right. Those boards seem tightly nailed. There might be something in that shed. Where? Behind us. Oh, yeah, sure. Come on. Let's have a Look. Look. It's not nailed up. What? The door's hanging open. Mm-hmm. Richard. Yes, dear? We're not alone out here. What? I feel it. Someone's watching us. Oh, maybe it's the cigarette-smoking ghost of the inn. Darling, I'm serious. <laughs> I feel someone watching us. You know, if I were the uneasy type, you'd scare me half to death. I mean it. I'm frightened. Oh, come now, darling. I think we'd better go back to that town where we stopped for dinner. Nothing doing. I wouldn't brave that road again for anything. Come on, here's the shed. Still got the matches I gave you? Yes, but... Let's don't go inside, please. Why not? I... I just don't want to. But we've got to find something to break away those boards from the door up at the house. Well, come on. I've got the candle... I wish I had a flashlight. Richard, don't. It's all right, dear. How about a match? Oh, Richard. Come on, come on, give me a match. Oh, all right. Here. Good. 
There should be an old length of pipe or something in here we can use. There we are. There. Candle lit. Will you hold it, dear, while I look around? Richard. What's that? Hmm? Over there in the corner. Those black boxes. Boxes? Oh. Richard. They're coffins. Coffins? <laughs> oh, nonsense. They are. They're painted solid black. Look. Three little silver handles. You may be right. Three handles on this side, too. They are coffins, Richard. Yes. Yes, they are. The new ones. What in the world are they doing out here? Let me have the candle. Look. Aren't those silver inscription plates on the lids? That's what I want to look at. Here now. There. Oh, Richard, I... I'm frightened. Good Lord. Well, this plate says Richard Longacre. And the other one? Emily Longacre. <laughs> Died May 15th, 1942. Well, that's today. Richard! The light. Emily, what happened? Oh, the wind blew out the candle. Richard. Richard, is that you? What? Is that you moving about in here? No, I'm not moving. I thought it was you. Here, where are you? Richard! Oh, let go! Let go! Let go! Let go! Let go! Let go! Emily, where are you? She's not here. She's gone. Candle. Must be on the floor here someplace. Has to be here someplace. Must have light. I see. Longacre. Who's that? Is that Richard Longacre? Yes. Thank heaven. Who are you? Quiet. Don't let him hear you talking. Who are you? Can you get a light going? Yes. I found the candle. See if I get a match. Yes. No one here. No one in the shed but myself. The door's closed now. Good Lord. The lid. The lid on that coffin. Moving. Something inside pushing it up. Slowly pushing the lid up. Pushing it up. Take this gun round and lid, will you? Well, don't stand there looking like a stupid country pumpkin. Take this lid so I can get out of this cursed casket. Who, who are you? How did you get in there? Will you take this lid, you fool? Sure. All right. There. Now, help me out. Sure. Give me your hand. Yeah. 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 How long were you in that thing? Oh, heaven only knows. Hours before you and your wife came into the shed. My wife? Where is she? I have a pretty good idea. Where is she? I rather imagine he's got her. He? Who? <sighs> Stuffy in that box. Who? Where is my wife? Where are you, fool? He comes back and finds me here. Who are you? Tell me what you know. My name is Warren Hiley. Hiley? Yes. Dr. Hiley. The one who sent you the notice of your aunt's death. But he said you were dead. He? The innkeeper. Oh. Jason. Yeah. That was his name. Jason. I rather imagine he would tell you I'm dead. You see, he thinks he killed me. What? Yes. Five years ago. He lured me out here to attend to the occupant of Merivale, Priscilla Longacre. My aunt? Yes. I found the woman dying. 
someone had attempted to murder her. Someone did. I couldn't save her life. The innkeeper? Exactly. He attacked me. Left me for dead. But I recovered. I hid the body of the dead woman. Found a place to hide myself. But why? Why what? Why did you hide out? Why didn't you return and accuse the innkeeper of murder? I had no proof. Besides, I was always devoted to Miss Longacre. I wanted to find that motive behind the crime. I did not know it would take five years to do so. What was the motive? It's not a novel one. Jason wants to buy Maryvale. Because somewhere on this property are buried more than three tons of silver. Silver? Yes. It's brought to England from France during the revolution. Its owners were captured and executed. And the silver finally became a legend. But now I have discovered it. Here? On this property? Indeed. Yes. Would you like to see it? Now, look here. I'm not interested in silver until I find my wife. Where is she? I... I think I can take you to her. Well, then suppose you get about doing it. You must be most careful. Yeah. Hold the light over here. Oh, sure. Yeah, help move this straw aside. Hey, hey, careful of the flame. There. The trap door. Yes. I know. Very quiet. I'm going to open it. All right. Careful now. Give me the light. You go first. All right. I'll follow. Be careful. Careful at the bottom. There's a quick lion pit just a few feet from the bottom of the ladder. There. Here. This way, this way. I am Pitts over there. What's that? Emily. It's my wife. Emily. Emily. Oh, oh Richard. Oh, darling. Are you all right? Yes, I, I guess so. What? what happened? I don't know. The light went out and you disappeared. Who's that? Oh, Dr. Hiley, dear. The one who sent us the notice of Aunt Priscilla's death. Doctor, my wife. Pleasure, Mrs. Longacre. But where are we? This is a chamber beneath the old shin. And I discovered it the day Priscilla was murdered five years ago. I brought her here. Uh, can you get up, Mrs. Longacre? Yes, I, I think so. Here, dear, I'll help you. I must have fallen down here. Will you come this way, please? Can you walk down? Yes, I, I'm all right. Over here, if you please. All right. Come here. Here. Under the heavy glass. Look. Oh. The body of an old woman. She was Priscilla Longacre. I've kept her here all these years until I could get the entire Longacre clan together. Now you are together. <laughs> I waited for this day. Five years I waited. Richard. Look here, Dr. Hiley. Jason. Yes, doctor. Jason. The innkeeper. Watch them closely, Jason. I'll watch them, doctor. Richard. <laughs> you, Dr. Hiley. You told me Jason wants to buy a Mary Vale. It's you who wants to buy it. You'll never repeat that to anyone, Mr. Longacre. Lies. Everything you told me, nothing but lies. You killed my aunt. It took me five years to locate her only living relative. You, Richard Longacre. And now that you are here, Mary Vale will soon be mine. Oh, but you can't murder her. <laughs> And no one will ever find either of you in the lime pit. Oh, no. No. Your coffins are prepared up above there. Tomorrow, there will be a funeral, but 
Your bodies will not be in the casket. Richard. Why oh, give my time now, Doctor? Oh, yes, Jason. Of course. Here. Oh. You killed him. No such luck. Nearly rendered him unconscious. He'll never regain consciousness. What are you going to do with him? The lion pit will take short work of him. Oh, no, no. Get back. You'll join him soon enough. Oh, don't do that. No, wait. Stop. I threw you down here through the trap door up there. It was you up there. Crawling into that coffin and pretending to hide was all a lot of sham to lure me down here. <laughs> now, look here. I demand that you release us. <laughs> You're in no position to demand anything. Your aunt is next, and you will follow her. And I warn you, this gun I have is loaded. What are you going to do? The old lady goes into the pit next. No, Richard. Let her alone. Oh, I'm not going Put that body down! Hedrick! I'll shoot if you come later. Richard, don't! You've done enough, Hiley. Stand back. Put her down. No, she's going into the pit. Put her down, I say. Richard, come back! You devil! Richard, that woman. Didn't you, Doctor? No, 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 no. Take her head off. You killed me. After keeping oh. me here oh. all these oh. Oh. years. Oh. Well, Dickhead. you didn't kill me, Let me Doctor. Let me go. Stop. Let me go. You didn't Let me go. kill me. Oh, well, help the bit! The bit! Help me! Help me! Let me go! Help me. Help me. Help me. Help me. Help me. heard funeral arrangements completed. Tonight's original tale of dark fantasy by Scott Bishop. Alf Daniels was heard as Richard Longacre. Eleanor Naylor Curran was Emily. Fred Wayne played Dr. Hiley. Georgiana Cook was the old woman. And Muir Height was Jason. Next Friday at this time, one of the most unusual of all dark fantasy adventures. Created for you by Scott Bishop. Reaching. For pictures of the production, Dead Hands Reaching, and of the dramatic staffs of Dark Fantasy, as well as for vivid and exciting picturizations of next Friday's story, Dead Hands Reaching, we call your attention to the two-page story appearing in the magazine, Movie Radio Guide. Dated tomorrow, May 16th. And now this is Tom Paxton reminding you to buy United States war bonds and stamps. Dark Fantasy comes to you each Friday night from Oklahoma City. This is the National Broadcasting Company.